Hi there. Today's video is a little longer than usual. The topic is coming out. And for most people, the automatic association is with coming out as gay or lesbian or trans or what have you. Not surprising because that's where the term comes from. So if you're not part of the LGBTQ community, it may be tempting to think that the whole topic just doesn't apply to you. But it does. Coming out is about revealing some aspect of yourself to others that might be tempting to leave unsaid. Coming out as religious, or as atheist, or as left-wing, or right-wing, or as having colitis, or cancer, or as having been sexually assaulted, as in the Me Too movement. Recently, a lot of women have contemplated coming out about having had an abortion given recent legislation in the United States that decisions about what a citizen should do with their body should be made by the government, not by that citizen herself. That's a freedom that should be taken away, apparently. So almost no matter who you are, coming out about something is an issue you'll face sooner or later. But I'm going to approach this from the LGBTQ perspective. As a gay practitioner, I've seen a lot of members of the LGBTQ communities who are thinking about how to come out, usually to family, but sometimes to work or friends or healthcare professionals. And many years ago, when I was in graduate school, I was one of the leaders of a campus LGBT organization. And every year, we had a discussion session on issues involved with coming out. Coming out is also a big topic of conversation and discussion in the gay community afterwards. The difference between what we thought was going to happen and what did happen, whether things got easier or harder, how it affected relationships, and how it changed the person. The vast majority are glad they did it, but it's not the smoothest process. I've seen a lot of people whose big plan is to drink a little extra at Thanksgiving dinner and hope it just slips out, just happens spontaneously. Now, usually I'm kind of non-directive in therapy, but honestly, that's a crappy idea. So I've had a lot of people say, fine, then how? Well, I'm going to give you 10 steps, and you don't have to agree with them. And of course, I cannot cover all the possibilities and situations. So every single step is arguable. Is this sequence right for you? I have no way of knowing. That's life. Step one, decide not to come out. One of the problems with coming out is that people are trying to think of what to say, how to say it, when to say it, how other people might react, what they would do then, and on and on and on. And trying to do all that stuff at once is constipating. It clogs the system and shuts things down. One of the things that we do in therapy is we tease things apart, one thing at a time. So when someone is talking about coming out, my usual advice is decide not to. Not this week or not this month, maybe not till this next fall, something like that. It's not on the table. You ain't gonna do it. This can alleviate a lot of the anxiety. It means we can think about the process with no pressure. The metaphor I use for this is a water slide. Maybe you've been on one of these things. You're trying to decide whether you really want to go down this thing, but once you start, you're committed. You can't change your mind. You're going. There's a fear that if you begin planning to come out, you're setting a whole future in action that will get harder and harder to stop. So by deciding not to come out, you can take that fear away. No matter what you do, you're not coming out this month. Relax. This can enable you to begin thinking about the process, and I'm quite serious about this. I recommend coming up with a specific date and not saying, I will come out on that date, but yes, saying, I shall not come out before that date. Afterwards, whatever, maybe, but not before. Step two. Sit on the no. Now that you can relax, you can look at your ambivalence. 
There's something pulling you forward and something holding you back. We're going to do them one at a time. And the one to start with is all the great reasons not to come out. I recommend sitting down with paper and pen and really listing all the downsides. And let's be clear, there are some. For one thing, it's hard to take back. Mom, you remember what I said last week? I was, I was just joking with you. That's a hard sell. Then there's all the negative reactions you might get. The fact that you lose control of the secret when you give it to any other person. The fear of increased scrutiny. Whatever. If you haven't come out, there are definitely things holding you back. Name them. What are they? I suggest people take at least 20 minutes doing this and then leave it to percolate for a couple of days. More of those ideas will come up. It is hard to let go of reluctance until you know what it's about. Step three, sit on the yes. Okay, now let's flip to the other side of your ambivalence. What's pulling you forward? What are the reasons that come out? Why do you want to do this? What are you hoping for? And there are some good reasons here too, but there are also some lousy ones like, because I should, because it's expected. This is your life. You get to pick. And again, I suggest people take at least 20 minutes without distractions to write down all of their reasons, pulling them forward to come out and then leave it for a couple of days and more thoughts will probably occur to you. Step four, define the worst. Now this step may seem a bit repetitive. The worst possible outcome is a good reason not to come out. And you already did that bit. But this is really a special case. We want to define your best guess about the far extreme of what might happen. Some people realize that their unspoken fears aren't very realistic. Others realize that their fears are very realistic. Yes, your parents could throw you out because they said that is exactly what they would do if any kid of theirs turned out to be gay. It's possible. Weirdly, it's often the ones who are against abortion who say they're fully prepared to abort their own parenthood. It seems inconsistent to me, but what do I know? You want to identify what you're really afraid of and how likely that is. And then there's a sub-step. You need to ask yourself if you could survive that happening. It would be difficult, yes. Would you survive? And if the answer is no, then maybe you're not ready to come out. I'll give you another metaphor. Coming out is like going into a casino and putting every relationship you have onto the roulette table and then spinning the wheel. You might win, you might lose. Many people wind up losing at least somebody and there's a general principle of gambling. You do not gamble money. You can't afford to lose. Now this doesn't mean that you can't ever come out. It may just mean that you're not ready yet. And it doesn't mean that you can't continue in this 10-step process. You can, but you're not ready for step eight, which is actually coming out until you've built a plan to survive your worst reasonably likely outcome. Step five, script as if. Remember, you've decided not to come out. So the pressure is completely off. So now you can write a work of fiction. What would you do and say if you were going to come out? Which you're not, at least not right now. You can ask yourself questions like, how would I do it if I was ever to do it in some alternate universe? Who would I want to come out to first? What would I say to them in this fantasy that's not true and not going to happen? Now, some people think, oh, this should be spontaneous. It should be from the heart. My advice, get over it. This is tough. You probably need to think it through in advance, and you might need to rehearse it if you are ever 
to actually put it into practice. This may feel unnatural. It is. The natural thing is to keep your mouth shut and continue the way you've been living. Coming out is a big change, and big changes don't feel natural. Get used to it. Step six, build your base. So the relationships you're thinking of putting on the roulette table might be at risk. Most people don't lose folks forever, but there's undeniably a period of awkwardness or instability afterward while everybody is trying to regain their balance. Coming out shakes things up. So it helps if you have a source of stability that you can rely on. Once you come out, you'll have that solid ground that you can step back on and grab hold of. Maybe it's your therapist. Maybe it's the group of friends you've already told. Let them know what you're thinking of doing and feel free to ask for support. Some people really don't know how things are going to go, so they want to know that there's a place they can stay for a couple of days. Just in case. But at minimum, people you can talk with and debrief the whole thing and tell the whole story. Some people realize they're all alone. They want to come out, but they have no community. Most gay people build that up first. They have some LGBTQ friends, people who know the score, and a sense of being accepted for who they are, at least by somebody. And some people decide, you know, if this all goes sideways, I have no one to talk to, so maybe they're not ready until they found that. Obviously that complicates things. How do you get that network without first coming out to somebody? Well, for most people, family are not the first people to come out to. Not because they don't count, but because they do count. They're the highest stakes. There's no right way to do this, but most people have a few friends who know before they come out to their family. And that, too, is a problem. How do you come out to one friend and rely on them not to tell all the others? There are two common solutions to this. The first is, if you know other gay people who understand the idea that this is difficult, or trans people, and that the secret is yours to share, not theirs to share, now, the second option is to look at your social network and find someone who isn't connected to everyone else. Maybe you have a good friend, but they hang out with all of your other friends, and you want to come out to them. Well, maybe that's a good idea, but maybe not first. You've got this other friend from that, from that school you used to go to, or that one thing you don't do anymore, and... They're not really tied in with any, anyone else. That's often a good place to start. Don't quote me on that. Things can always go wrong. But it may be an option. Talk to that one outlier who isn't tied into your network. The key is to build yourself some stable ground to hang on to if the ground you're on gets shaky as a result of you coming out. Step seven. Decide again. Okay, so you've thought through what you would do, what you would say, and to whom, and you've figured out how to cope if things get challenging. Maybe now you can go back to that pledge. It's good practice to keep your promise to yourself. You said you weren't going to come out this month, so don't. But you left it open what happens after that, so now you can decide based on your planning and careful contemplation, whether you want to rethink that stance of not coming out. Maybe it is something you want to do, or maybe not. There's no rule. It's your life. You can remake that decision every single month for as long as you want. There's no rush. And if it's a multi-step plan, first this person, then this one, then that one, and so on. You don't have to decide the whole thing at once. Though, 
if your big idea is to come out to your sister first and you know that she's a notorious blabbermouth, you might not want to rely on her to hang on to the information for long. And listen, the plan does not have to be to do it in person. If it's the two of you talking, they might start reacting before you've got out what you want to say. Now, maybe this is how you want to do it anyway, in person, no problem. But coming out in writing is allowed if that's what you want to do. And there can be some real advantages to it. You get to carefully compose exactly what you want to say. And you get to set it aside. And then you can come back and read it with fresh eyes and edit it and edit it and edit it. If you're coming out by, uh, by email, by the way, always compose your message in Word or something. You can cut and paste it into email later. You don't want to accidentally send the thing before you're ready. Now, chances are, whoever it is you're sending this thing to will read the whole thing before they get in touch with you. And they will have at least a little bit of time to think before they react. One of the things we often want to do in difficult exchanges is just slow the whole process down so that everyone has time to cope emotionally and calm themselves. Coming out in writing might be a way of doing that. It's not for everyone, but it might be for you. Step eight, enact the plan. Okay, so let's say you've decided to go ahead. Again, feel free to rehearse. Stand in front of a mirror and figure out exactly what you want to say. How would you go about it? You need to choose your timing and setting as well. Launching into this when you're in the car five minutes away from the family reunion, that's a lousy idea. You want a time when there isn't any time pressure and a setting where people are more likely to chill out and think. For most people, that means talking one-on-one. -on -one. But some people know that one family member is a calming influence on the other. So telling them together might be better. And for people who tend to fly off the handle, sometimes a restaurant booth is best if they're more likely to force themselves to stay calm in a public setting. Always consider your safety. Based on your knowledge of this person, you probably have some guesses about how they'll react and what they might say in response. Okay, what could you say then? What would you do? And have you told your friends what's up? Is their spare bedroom ready to go? Are they in town? Do you have their permission to call them at 3 a.m. if you have to? Throughout, remember to breathe. And remember that anxiety causes most people to speed up. They talk fast, they can't listen to anybody else, and they start tripping over their own words. Keep a mental foot on the brake. Slow yourself down. Give yourself time to say your piece. Step nine, make allowances. And here's something I nag LGBT cures about all the time. Let me try it with you. So listen, you've arrived at the point where you want to share this information with your friends or your family or whoever. Hmm? How long has it been since you knew that this was true of you? How long have you had to think about this? Five years. Ah, okay. And have you been reading books about it? and watching videos, and seeing movies about it, and talking with your friends about it, and thinking about what you do? You yeah. have. Okay. Now, so you tell your mom, how long does she have between hearing this information and having to say something? How about maybe four seconds? You have had five years, or ten. She's had four seconds. So what are the odds that what comes out of her mouth is going to be the most intelligent thing 
ever. The perfect, most sensitive, caring, thoughtful thing. Zero. It's not going to happen. And it wouldn't with you either if you hadn't had those five years to think about it. So you need to prepare yourself not for that perfect response you're hoping for, but for something stupid and thoughtless, something that is far from perfect because, frankly, that's probably what you're going to get. And you may feel that you really need something good for the, from this person, you know, who's so important to you. But you need to let that go because you're probably not going to get it. And that does not mean she's horrible. It means she hasn't had time to think properly. Someday I'd love to do the rounds of parents and ask them about the stupid things they said when their kid came out to them. I think I could fill a book. Parents torture themselves for years, often for decades, about the fact that they didn't come up with the right thing. And frankly, often their gay or lesbian or trans kid tortured them about it too. Listen. You're hoping for some compassion. Give some compassion. And step 10, return to base. Once it's over, go back to that base you built up, see your friends, see the people who already knew, process what happened, talk about it, have some tea, get some sleep, eat something, see your therapist if you have one, and if you really feel like it, rant or cry or express gratitude, or even let yourself feel some despair. Despair always feels lethal, but it isn't. We all feel some in the course of our lives, and then it goes away. Make no assumptions about the future. So many people say, after they said that, there is no going back. It's okay to be upset, but leave the future in the future for a bit. Families that go through the most awful disruptions, and believe me, I've seen them, they tend to recover with time. And recognize what you've done. You've taken off your disguise. You've stood as yourself in front of the world, unsure how they will react. Remember that you've done this. And um, check your pulse still beating. You lived. Coming out can be one of the most powerful experiences of your life. Chances are it will be. A moment or a series of them when you said, nevertheless, I exist. Here's who I am. One way or another, that's a task that faces every human being. And you faced it in a more direct way than many people are ever called to. Congratulate yourself. And remember, for most people, yeah, it gets better. And coming out is one of the things that, for most people, makes it better. Eventually. Thanks for watching. For my books, The Assertiveness Workbook, How to Be Miserable, 40 Strategies You Already Use, and How to Be Miserable in Your 20s, look at any online bookseller or go to your local bookstore. They might have it or they can order it for you. See you again.